Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, clearly I walked in as we were engaged in serious conversation about serious business, right? And this is the business of our people. And the one thing that I want to say is politics is not a spectator sport. So you'll see people who are always on the sidelines and they'll say, you know, you go out and you say, well, I need you to register to vote. Oh, what am I going to register to vote for? Politicians don't do anything for me. And I think we kind of got the science twisted, right? Because as we know, it's politics, but there's a course called political science. And just like there's science to everything else, there's a one plus one equals two, the same thing goes with political science. And it requires the work of the people. Most of the times when we see major movements happen, it happened not because a politician said, oh, let me see about you know, signing the Civil Rights Act into existence. No, it happened because our community coalitions came together, our clergy came together, right? Who were the backbone of our nation, of our people. And then we as a people united through our school organizations, or just neighbor to neighbor to say, you know what, we all deserve a right to vote. And one of the things, I guess that's more so to the Voting Rights Act, but one of the things that I could never understand if voting was something that people should just say, you know what, whatever, politicians do nothing for me, I'm not gonna vote, it doesn't mean, my vote doesn't mean anything. How many people heard that before? Right. I'm gonna go ahead on and say, how many people have said that before, right? And if it meant so little, why were they putting their lives on the line every day for it? I can't imagine what could be so great that I would allow myself to be ridden with dogs and hosed down with, with hoses from Johnny Pumps mm -hmm. and hung? Why is it, what, would, what about that right is so important that people would put their life on the line every day and not just one person? Like, you know, tens and hundreds of thousands of people throughout our country. And it's not just our country, it's really throughout the world. So we have to understand and internalize the power that our vote has. <coughs> and I'm gonna go ahead on and say that when I worked for Congresswoman Clark, and also through my work in the New York State Assembly, the one thing that we would say is, oh, we need more funding for our community because we need more funding for our schools. The first thing that they do, you know, we have something called the division of budget and all these different things. And they say, well, you have 25 people in your community. According to those 25 people, now how do they know that 25 people are there? Because they sent us census forms. Some people got the census form and they threw it in the garbage and they left it on the kitchen table and they said, I'm not gonna fill that census out. They just wanna know my information. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They got your information anyway. Mm -hmm. They had your information since you were born. It's called a birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's called a social security mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. But people weren't filling them out, so they weren't counted. Mm -hmm. And then by extension, people weren't registering to vote, so we don't know that you're really there. And when we go to fight for resources, they say, well, there's only 25 people there. But we know there's 50 people there because I live there. Mm -hmm. But when we are not activated to fill out our census, to get registered to vote, we don't exist. So when people say that your vote is your voice, that's not just a poem or it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't sound good. It is the truth. So I just thank you so much for, you know, talking about such an important topic just so that we can understand really what it is that our vote means. And then at the end of the day, mm -hmm. when people vote for someone and they don't, you don't hold them accountable, then if they're doing something that you don't want them to do, where's your power to get them out of office? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have governments overturning all the time because the elected officials are not being responsive to the community. Mm -hmm. So if there's an elected official, including myself, mm -hmm. check, me, check me out on Facebook, come by the office which is over on Rockaway between Pickett and East New York Avenue. Mm -hmm. And if I am not being responsive to your needs, to your questions, to your letters, to your posts, 
then you hold me accountable because that is your power. Everyone else organizes and puts their power together to get things done. We need to start to do the same thing. And I mean, and I notice that there are a lot of young people here, but from the youngest to the oldest, politics is everywhere. We complain about the price of cigarettes. That's politics. That's a tax. So I encourage you to get up, get involved, get out. Uh, one of the things that we say about the tea party is we didn't really, we just took them for granted, Miriam, and we didn't really know that they, that they were really gonna do what they did when they took over Congress. And one of the things that Congressman McClark likes to say, we were calling them crazy, mm -hmm. but crazy showed up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when crazy show up, they get the things that they wanna get done achieved. So we need to get up, get crazy, and show out, and really show all over the state of New York that we are here, that we need business, and that we need the funding to tri trickle on down to our, our great uh, borough, and definitely our respective neighborhoods. So again, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. I'm Assemblywoman Latrice Walker. Oh, thank you. Thank you so very much. Please give it up for the Honorable Assemblywoman Latrice Walker. Thank you, please. Now you guys understand the importance of getting involved politically. At least I hope you do. And we have our guest. We, we've been trying to hold it down until you got here. No, that's all right. That's all right. We, you know, the show must go on. But, but as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the flyer mentioned that we would have an open discussion before the entertainment or the edutainment. And the lady who I wanted to connect with, partnerships, relationships are so important in accomplishing anything of, of value, anything worthwhile. And I said, this. This issue of gentrification is much bigger than Green Art Poets Cafe. It's much bigger than Curtis Harris. This is much bigger than, than, than you and I. So I said, I, I need to get together. Assemblywoman, if you have to leave, I understand. But thank you so very much for your presence. Thank you so very much. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring to the stage, or do you want to sit there? It's up to you. Okay, i like to uh, uh, bring to the stage uh, this lady who is a powerhouse, who I connected with, and I said she, she's the perfect person to rile things up. She's the perfect person to speak the truth, speak truth to power, and unashamedly. So I just want to, once again, give an admonition. Uh, this is an uncensored event, so with all due respect, Assemblywoman, all due respect, mamas, I already gave you guys the... Okay. Uh, yes, disclaimer. I never want to disrespect my elders or my elected official leaders. You are our leaders and we respect you and I don't want you to ever think that we don't. But this is a serious issue and some of our artists like to speak freely. So I hope that's okay with you. All right. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Put your hands together for harsh reality. Hello, I'm just gonna say this real quick. Thank you for having me. My name is Harsh Reality. My name is also Shadell. My mama named me that. Call me either one. All right. Okay, so now I'm just coming down here. Is everyone okay? Cool. Yes. Okay, you guys look a little tight. It's cool. Um, when he told me to come and have this talk, I thought that it was very, very important. Um, the thing that I'm doing this year, well, not, well, 2016, is um, it's called New Basics. Everybody say New Basics. New, new basics. basics. Okay. Um, a lot of times we like to talk about um, black community, black issues, people getting shot, black education, and all of these things. And they're all great. But before we can really get there, we have to get back to the basics, the new basics. Our homes are messed up. Okay. Our homes are messed up. We have to start from the ground up. Some of us don't get along with our parents. Some of us don't get along with our children, our cousins, whatever. Some of us are messed up internally. You understand? If you agree, say, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's OK. <laughs> Some of us are messed up on the inside. And when we're messed up on the inside, we jump out into the world and we're trying to figure out all these issues. Black community, Trayvon Martin. 
whoever, whoever. But how can we really do this when we're not whole ourselves? I think about relationships. How can we even have a connection with someone else? We say this all the time. It's on Instagram. It's everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I can't get with you until you get you right. You know? And I feel like that really goes for the community. And I'm really excited right now. I already had this prepared. My phone's dead, but so I really can't go by that. So I'm remembering what I had noted. And also, I just saw my mama. You know, say dope. 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 Say it again, dope. Dope. Okay? I didn't have the best relationship with my mother. I'm 27 years old. I did not have the best relationship with my mother. I was also adopted. Did not have the best relationship with the woman that adopted me. Okay? And I'm out here, I'm trying to do all these awesome things, and I realize that I'm deteriorating on the inside because I, I don't, my mother is my core. Your mother is your core. Everyone say mother. 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 One more time, say mother. 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 And sometimes we lose the connection with our core. So how can you connect with yourself if you don't, if you're not connected with, with on the inside? You feel me? And I would find myself battling and I would, I would turn to poetry. And I'm writing poems and stuff. I'm trying to... That's all right. It's not. It's uncensored. Uncensored. I'm writing poems and I'm trying to figure out, you know, how can I... You know, thinking about all my deep friends, you know, how can I, you know, get connected with the spiritual side of things, you know? All of that. And I'm like, it's not working. It's not. It might work for a little bit. I'll hit an open mic and I'll spit it. And they're like, oh, that shit was dead. And I'm like, oh, thank you. But then after a while, it's like, I still got this baggage, this weight, you know? So I feel like, man, there's so many things we can talk about. What's one issue going on? Somebody give the issue right quick. Gun violence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a real good one. <laughs> when I think about gun violence, what do you think after that? Funerals. Huh? Funerals. Funerals, how do guns get here? Uh, uh, I think about why are you so angry? That's what I think about. Why are you so mad? Why? We all want to believe we can't feel. You fuck it out of your mind. Everybody in this room has a heart. We all come from a spirit. We have a soul. We were conceived in love. Whoever laid down and fucked whoever else, they loved that person for that moment, at least. Or <laughs> love was going on. It was love. It's only two things going on in this entire world. It's love, say love. Love. And fear, say fear. 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 So I think about what are you, what's, why are you so angry? And I feel like all of, the, all of this, because you know, love and anger and emotion, it all goes back to the family. It all goes back to family. Mm -hmm. Who cares about people they don't know? Raise your hand. I'm glad you're being honest if you got your hand down. Because you don't. I know I kind of don't. I'm learning to do it. I'm learning to love people who I see on the bus. I'll be honest, because we're all human. OK, so those people don't really affect you. The people who are killing other people don't love the people on the bus. They don't. They love their family or they hate their family. If you agree, say, hmm. Okay. But it's true. They love or hate their family. It's not these strangers. We all know some of them don't love their friends. I just want to be honest with y'all. So it's the family. It's the core. It's the center. You don't have to be honest, but just think about it. How is your relationship with your core? With your center, whatever that center might be. You know, like, who knows what it is? Society gives us this structure of what a family's supposed to be, and that fucks us up already. So there's so many different factors that I feel like as a community, we're not understanding. Because we got things going on in our air, our soil, our food that are messing with our feelings. That we can't combat. Everything we cannot fight. We can't. It's not, it's not possible. You know what I mean? You know, in the grocery store now, they got a whole brand new aisle of organic food, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. 